and welcome to Kildalton Agricultural College. My name is Gerard Griffin and I'm a machinery teacher here in the college. And today I want to talk a little bit about the sustainability of Irish grassland. What I want to talk to you about is establishing the grassland and in some of the mechanical means of promoting that growth and maintaining a good healthy sward. I also want to look a little bit at clover, which is something that's very important from a sustainability point of view. So look, the first thing we want to look at here today, we're standing here in a field of grass. How do I as a farmer decide whether I want to reseed this field or not? So firstly, what is reseeding? Reseeding is where we go into a field and we turn up fresh soil or we break the surface of the field and we renew the grass. We put in a mixture of new grass seeds. So why would I want to do that? Well, as you'll see in managing sustainable grass, an important part of managing the grass is measuring the grass. And by measuring the grass, we know if it's being productive or not. So when we identify a paddock or a field which is less productive, we might make the decision to go in and reseed that field. There are a number of things that we need to consider when we talk about reseeding. The method of reseeding is very important and also the nutrient requirements of the seed. Ideally, on an intensive farming system, we want ryegrass, which is very productive and which is very good at taking up nutrients. So if we use fertilizers, it's going to be very sustainable. It's going to use all of that fertilizer. Whereas if we have more weed grasses becoming established, our fertilizer is not being utilized fully, so it's less sustainable. So that's possibly a reason why some of our grassland would need to be reseeded. Other reasons why grassland might need to be reseeded would be potentially damage due to weather, strain either from drought or flooding, excessive machinery operations on the field damaging it, or livestock damaging it during grazing. Or over time the, the perennial rye grasses will just die out and be competed out of the field or the paddock by weeds or weed grasses. Now, if we are going reseeding, the first thing we need to consider is the nutrient requirements of that reseed, like I said. We need to get our soil pH correct by using lime, and we need to get our phosphorus and potassium, or P and K, need to be at a suitable index or a suitable level for that grassland to establish. In terms of doing that, we need to ensure that we've got a soil sample taken and analysed, and you'll be looking at that in another video. Then we need to decide what method of reseeding we're going to use. Remember, when we want grass to grow, we don't necessarily need to go down very deep into the field to establish a good seed bed for that grass to grow in. So a traditional method of reseeding in Ireland would have been ploughing. Ploughing needs to be done very carefully if we're using that as our method of reseeding, because we don't want to go too deep. If we go too deep, we're burying a lot of the more nutrient-rich soil at the top and we're bringing up possibly inferior soils. Another problem with ploughing is the potential to bring up a lot of stones and also the extra cultivation work that would be required afterwards. So alternative methods of reseeding include disking the field, include direct drilling and include over sowing, which we will look at in a second. In order to get a good establishment of grass when we reseed a field, it's essential that the field is clean. We need to make sure that it's either grazed off very tight, mown off very tight, or if there's a lot of broadleaf weeds in the field, it should be sprayed off using a glyphosate spray done by a professional who understands the requirements of that job. Then we can decide on our reseeding method and we can progress on to creating a fine, firm seed bed which is what we require for the seed itself. Like I said, reseeding is an essential part of sustainable farming because in order to be productive and to make the most use of the nutrients we're applying, we need to have grasses which can thrive. And a grass seed mixture is never going to be just one type of grass seed. This is an example of a grass seed mix which is designed for a heavier type of land and you'll notice that there are a number of different grass varieties in it. 
And if we look at the grass seed itself, we'll see that it's a very light seed. You can see how easily it blows away in the breeze. This seed does not have a lot of energy, so it doesn't need to be buried very deeply into the soil. We just need to scratch off a little bit on the surface to get that seed in there. And one of the most important things to get the seed to germinate is that it has good soil seed contact and it has sufficient moisture to allow it to germinate and grow. Something else that you'll notice in this grass seed here is these very small little yellow seeds. Very light, very small. Those seeds are clover and clover is another area that I want to look at here today because it is an essential component of our sustainable farming grassland system. Clover is both a nutritious food source for livestock and possibly even more importantly from an Irish context at the moment, it is a means by which we can fix atmospheric nitrogen into the soil to feed our grass. Clover can be planted with the grass seed when we're seeding the field or it can be put in afterwards after the grass has been established. And there's a couple of reasons why people might consider putting grass or putting clover into the grass afterwards. Number one, if we put this clover in with our grass seed and it germinates with our grass seed, it can be difficult to control the weeds that also establish with the grass. Very often the weed killers that we might use in a newly established grassland are designed for broadleaf weeds such as young docklings and chickweed. As you'll see, clover is also broadleaf and if we're not very careful, we will kill the emerging clover plant. Another thing about clover is that it likes to establish in warmer temperatures. So ideally, clover goes in between April and midsummer. If we're doing an autumn reseed, which can be quite popular on Irish farms, it can be difficult to get that clover to establish. So again, we might need to go back in afterwards. And sometimes, due to weather conditions, grazing management, or nutrient management of the field, the clover that goes in with our reseed may not establish correctly. So we might have to go back in after a couple of years and reintroduce clover. Like I said, clover is an extremely useful plant to have in our grassland. The reason being, I mentioned that clover can fix atmospheric nitrogen. It's a leguminous plant. That means that in its root structure, we have nodules which can transfer the atmospheric nitrogen taken from the air into a usable form of nitrogen for the plant. Now, if we break up this root structure, we'll find that we've got a strong, long, strong root from which the clover plants are growing. We also have these very fine roots then which go down into the soil. And on these very fine roots, we can see there are little nodules. And these little nodules are what help to convert that atmospheric nitrogen into a usable nitrogen. The benefit of that is that atmospheric nitrogen will reduce the need to apply chemical nitrogen to the fields afterwards. And if we can do that, it means that Irish grassland becomes more sustainable, we reduce our dependence on chemical nitrogen, and while we still require early nitrogen on the field because clover doesn't really start working until later in the summer, during that later uh, spring and summer time, the clover can replace a lot of the bought in chemical nitrogen. It does need to be managed carefully, P and K levels need to be correct in the field, and the pH needs to be checked and kept at the correct level of about 6.5 for clover to establish and thrive. And there are a couple of other concerns that some people would have if we have excessive clover, such as the digestibility of too much clover going into the animal, and maybe some issues around weed control. But if we can get the management of it right, getting a good establishment of clover into our sward 
is going to be very beneficial to Irish agriculture and the sustainability of Irish grassland going forward. When we talk about reseeding, we've mentioned that there are a number of different methods. And like we said, the most important thing is that we're getting a good firm seed bed and that we're getting the seed in contact with the soil. An important part of that is that we get in and we consolidate that seed bed afterwards with a roller. Alternatively, if we want to go back in, like I said, and get more clover into that sward afterwards, we can use a machine like this. This is typically known as a grass harrow. It has spring-loaded tines here, which as we run them over the ground, will rip up dead grass and therefore open up the sward. Now, if we want to get clover into this sward, this machine has a seed box on it. That seed box has a metering unit, which will control the amount of that very small clover seed that we're putting out. There's a fan in here, an air blower. It picks up the seed from the metering unit. It delivers it down through these tubes to spreader plates, and that distributes it evenly over the ground. The key thing again here, the tines are opening up that sward. So we go in after the field has been freshly grazed, or we go in after we've taken a cut off of it for silage. We pull out any dead grass, we open up the sward, we get the seeds down in contact with the soil. We can also use this as a way of rejuvenating grassland. So we can pull out that dead grass, we can get rid of the competing weeds, and we can give the useful grass a chance to reinvigorate itself. We could also apply extra grass seed if we wanted to, if the sward is open or there's bare patches. And ideally after doing that, we would go in with an application of watery slurry. It has to be watery, particularly if we're putting it out with low emission slurry spreading equipment so that it will distribute underneath the grass and help that soil seed contact with the clover. We need to be careful of rolling after over sowing or after putting in clover because there's a danger we'll disturb too much of the seed. We need to try and get it in there when there's enough of moisture in the soil to allow it to germinate. We want to make sure our soil nutrients are correct. And we also want to make sure that we get it in there when there's enough of soil temperature. One last important consideration, either after reseeding, over sowing, or putting clover into the sward. We want to get in and graze it at lighter covers. The reason being we want to encourage tillering of the grass and we want to allow light down to the clover to make sure that it gets a chance to get enough of that sunlight to energize itself. If we can do this, if we can reseed unproductive swards, we'll make more use of the nutrients that we're applying. If we can open up dead grass like that, we can rejuvenate grassland swards. And if we can introduce clover into the swards, we'll make more use of atmospheric nitrogen and be less reliant on chemical nitrogen. Okay.